Van life is the most incredible experience I've ever had. But what if I told you that was a lie? No one talks about how rocks, dirt, sand, and dog hair will magically creep into the depths of your sheets and how you'll just have to get used to sleeping that way. So, after one year of living on the road, do I think van life is a lie? Van life is the most incredible experience I've ever had. I wake up almost every day with the most beautiful views, fresh flowers blooming all around me, my dogs are living their best lives, and we have loved every single day on the road. But what if I told you that was a lie? What if I played these same clips that you're watching just now, but stopped telling you how to feel based on the music that I the editor of these videos chose. What if I played those clips with the original audio, bugs swarming around us non-stop, and stopped editing out the ugly parts? Would you believe me? August 4th will mark one year of life on the road. My vaniversary, if you will. We started van life with no job, taking our time and chasing sunsets in Michigan, before making our way to upstate New York, and then watching the colors change in New England, my absolute favorite part of the country. I spent a couple weeks at home in Kentucky for some appointments, and then we were chasing sunsets again, this time in Moab. Next, we took up the hobby of making snow angels and absolutely falling in love with northern Utah. Yeah, I could live here for sure. We headed west for some quiet in the salt flats and then moved toward southern Utah, where we almost got stuck in some nasty mud, but made up for it with hands down some of the best views we've had on the road. From there, we crept further south into the superstitious mountains where I watched the most insane sunsets that still have had absolutely no competition. Our time in Tucson allowed us to slow down, sipping coffee slowly, taking long walks, and of course, more sunsets. We headed towards Joshua Tree and fought off a windstorm and then decided to go back to Southern Utah where my heater broke. Well, I said I was done crying. I tried and failed to fix it on BLM land, but we stuck it out, freezing our butts off with no heat in a snowstorm before eventually getting an Airbnb. I fixed the heater, and then it was time for Colorful Colorado. So, I just love it here. A few weeks in the mountains of the state that made me love life on the road, and then another trip home. Van lifing in western Kentucky for way longer than I planned to. The road finally called us back and we went straight to where we left off, Colorado. Driving the million dollar highway and exploring all that Boulder had to offer before feeling mesmerized by luscious green western Wyoming. Only passing through, we were on our way to more exciting things in the Sawtooth Mountains of Idaho, where we paddleboarded, stared at the mountains, and as you should remember from last week, fought off the impending summer heat. And that takes us to now.
never felt tomorrow closing in this fast oh I guess time's in a rush leaves are falling down but at least they grow back while I'm on a one-way track now I morning from Kalispell, Montana. Walmart to be exact. Sometimes the Walmart parking lots kind of feel like home, so it feels good to be home. Um, what you saw right before this, if I decide to use that footage, was me waking up at 445 to go into Glacier National Park because you have to have a reservation now, and I didn't feel like making one. Also, I'm not able to share any footage because they revert, well, they didn't reverse the law that you can film, but they heavily amended it. So, content creators who are making a profit, and by profit, I mean pennies at this point, um, cannot film without another reservation to do so. And from what I've read, those have to be booked like a long time in advance and I'm not about that life. So no longer able to share national park footage, but trust me when I tell you it was spectacular. Um, also got a new sticker that is my absolute favorite because I swear it looks just like Charlie sitting in the driver's seat and I think it's just the coolest. So anyways, um, moving on, I'm hot. I'm tired of being hot. It's been hotter this week than it was last week in my It's Hot video. Um, yeah, the highs every day have been about 95 and I'm tired of just driving around for no reason other than to run my air conditioner. So we're gonna drive really, 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 really far, six and a half hours, to another part of Montana that is about 10 degrees cooler. But before I do that, I'm gonna walk the dogs, get some iced coffee, and there's one more small thing I need to do. I have been seriously neglecting the van's exterior appearance, and I can't even lie. This is just a part of who I am as a person because I did the same thing to my car back home in Kentucky. From long drives through Utah, gravel roads in Kentucky, and hitting every freaking bug from Tennessee to Montana, I can't stand the sight of this thing anymore, and it is time to do something about it. When your life's been put on hold for far too long Sorrow and despair is growing strong There is always something good to be obtained From breaking loose and leave the things that kept you chained So when you find the strength to really shed your skin
watching sunrise meets my skin Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in Golden, golden. I'll follow only golden in spring rainbow trout and hummingbird wing living in montana in a van is incredible but remember you only believe that because it's what i'm telling you to believe i'm choosing music to manipulate your mood i'm editing clips and only showing the parts i want you to see i'm leaving a lot out the more i think about it the more I realize that van life is actually a lot like the Hunger Games. If you've ever seen the second movie, you'll know that competitors are put into an arena that's built like a clock. At the strike of each hour, something new and horrible happens. Acid rain, killer mutant monkeys, deadly lightning storms. And as much as I would love for you to believe that van life is always great and that my experience has been this incredible, magical thing every day, it isn't. No matter where you go, there is something unpleasant around the corner. In the winter, it's the snow. In the spring, it's mud. In Arizona, it's crowded campsites and lack of signal. In Idaho, it was heat. In Montana, the bugs. I hear a lot of van lifers discuss these things briefly, but no one seems to truly go into details about the ugly side of van life. Everyone talks about how hard it is when things break, but no one actually tells you it will have you in tears for hours, wondering how and if you can fix it, and questioning if maybe you should just give everything up. Everyone talks about how unorganized and chaotic the van gets, but no one talks about how seemingly impossible it is to do tasks that are already harder because you live in a small space, but with a broken piece of your van build. Everyone talks about how dirty your van will be, but no one talks about how rocks, dirt, sand, and dog hair will magically creep into the depths of your sheets and how you'll just have to get used to sleeping that way because nothing other than washing them will make it better and you can't get to a laundromat for another few days. Everyone talks about how you just get used to dealing with whatever toilet setup you have, but no one talks about how, regardless of what that toilet setup is, if your urine tank is too full, you can smell it while you're trying to sleep at night. Everyone talks about how challenging it can be to minimize your waste, but no one talks about how your tiny trash can will also start to smell and keep you up at night. Everyone talks about how there will be dog hair everywhere, but no one really talks about how, no matter how much you brush your shedding dogs, it will never put a dent in the dog hair, and your dogs will always be covered in a thick layer of dirt that will spread to the rest of the van. And I know there will be plenty of comments left on this video offering solutions to these problems, but until you've lived it and experienced it, you just don't understand that none of those solutions are valid and that even a simple life of living in a van is extremely complicated. I'm probably going to catch a lot of crap for this video, but I don't care. I'd rather be upfront and honest about my experience in hopes that it will help someone else. So, after one year of living on the road, do I think van life is a lie? No, I don't. After everything I just shared with you, the nitty gritty, the dirty, the disgusting, make you wonder why I want to live like this, and knowing there will be people who truly just view this as living in filth or glorified homelessness, I don't think van life is a lie, but I do think it's an omission. If you were to ask a van lifer any of the specific things I just mentioned, I don't think they'd lie, but if you aren't being specific, there are so many other things that are just so much cooler about living in a van. We'd rather talk about those things. I wanted to talk about how bad the bugs were in my last video, 
but it just didn't fit with the editing, so I omitted it. Van life is an omission, simply because there are so many more highs than there are lows. And yes, it is disgusting at times. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have heard a very nasty story from just this past week. But it's worth it. I have had some really hard times in the van, but I also had even harder times when I was living in a house. No matter where we live, we're all going to have hard times. Choose your heart. I chose the one that will bring me more joy. And despite what I may have told my mom during a fit of rage, tears, and frustration last week, I'm not done. Not yet. Miles in spring. I could cry the happiest happy Thanks. tears right now. <laughs> this is, it's so just so cool. <laughs> Just really happy to be here. This is just so cool. I mean, golden things. Gold hair. Gold rings. Gold leaves. Gold anything. Gold. I'll follow me.